This is Professor Darif Seitz. This Java tutorial is about the Graphical User Interface Border Layout Manager. Here we're running our GUI application and we can see the window here. The JFrame um, has a default border layout manager as its layout manager but we're not using the, the default content pane in this application and you can see that because there's a white border around the edge here we've replaced the default content pane with a J panel as our default contents but the J panel we've set up to have a border layout manager itself. So the difference here is if we were using the default content pane with the default border layout manager that it has, we would have no ability to have this border around the perimeter, perimeter this white margin, because you cannot add a border to a container, only to a J component and J panel is a J component. So that's one thing to note about this uh, demo here, this tutorial. But in the uh, panel it does have the border layout manager and the border layout manager has regions, a north region, west, south, east, and center as we see here. And we've put uh, in those regions will only accept a single component. The component that we've chosen to put in each region is a J panel. So we're having a hierarchy of J panels here. The border layout, it's managing just one component in each region, but the J panels inside them, they manage multiple components. We've only put one component inside each J panel, a label. The north, west, center, east, and south are each a J label inside their respective J panels. Each J panel we also gave a border, a red single pixel border. Let's go ahead now and resize this and see what happens when we stretch it, notice that the center region is reacting, getting larger or smaller. That's the way it works. We have also set preferred sizes for the northwest, south, and east J panels and not set any preferred size on the center. It automatically expands to take up any available space or to absorb any reduction in space. Now let's go look at the source code. Comments at the top mention that it is a border layout, layout manager demonstration, and also demonstrating the use of a J panel for the contents pane rather than the default contents pane, and the use of borders on the J panels. We extend J frame. Here is our J panel contents declaration and the regions that we're going to set up for the border layout we have a J panel for each one with appropriate names prefixed with panel to help us sort them out in the source code to clearly identify the type of objects we're dealing with. We have two uh, borders that we set up. We use the border factory class. It has static methods. We create an empty border. This is top, left, bottom, and right, and it's 10 pixels all the way around. We'll be using that as the border of our contents. We also set up a create line border with a static uh, method there, a red one pixel border that will be the border used for each of the regions. The color we have set up is white, for the contents pane, we're going to use that. That's that 10 pixel area that shows through around the edge. And the fonts will change the label font to be 16 point 
rather than the default 12 point. The constructor call the superclass with our title that we want in our window. We have a set fonts method that simply sets the font for all the labels through the UI manager. <clears throat> then here is the code right here to set up our custom contents pane. We instantiate a J panel, set its layout to be a border layout, set its border to be the border contents that we defined above, and the background color to be the color contents that we defined above, and then call the set content pane function passing this custom contents and we now have our J panel as the main contents for this application and it has a border layout and a border an empty border with gives us a margin effect next we have to create each of the panels that will go in each of the five regions first we do the center panel panel center and instantiate a label called center that we're going to add to that center panel and then we add the center panel to our contents pane using the border layout constant center to tell it what region we want this center panel to go into. Notice that we did not define a preferred size for center because it will automatically expand as necessary. Then we start with our different um, region panels. Here's the one for east. Instantiate a new panel. Set its border to the border region. Give it a preferred size with a dimension anonymous object of 100 by 300. Put a label in it and add it to our contents pane on the east. Similarly, we set up the other regions, each of them having their own label and their preferred size and placed into the appropriate region, the west, the north, and the south. Notice on the south we've commented out some code that we'll be uncommenting momentarily. Finally, down here at the end of our constructor, Rather than setting the size ourselves, we call pack to let the framework set the, the window size to be the best for the preferred sizes of all the components involved. And finally, we show the window set visible true. Here's our set fonts function. UI manager put the label fonts, our font that we set up up there. In our main method, which instantiates our class and sets the appropriate default close operation. Okay, let's now run this again and look at it. Now that we've gone through the code, this might make a little more sense looking at it. Again, the white area is the empty border on the main panel, our content panel, which is has a border layout and in the border layout of that content panel we have added to each region another panel. Each of those panels has a red border and a label in them. The labels as you can see are in the top row of each panel and in the center because a panel by default has a flow layout manager and the flow layout by default is centered and so it starts in the top row and centers each of these labels. If we resize it, we see the effect of the center region being the one to react. What we're going to do now is go back to the code and uncomment out and, and show something. Normally, to each region of a border layout, you can only add a single component. Since we've added J panels to each region, we fulfilled that uh, requirement, but the J panels themselves can 
have other components, multiple components added inside them, and we have not violated the upper level policy of one component per region. From the layout manager's point of view, we fulfilled that. We're going to show this by adding a second label here. We'll uncomment this to our south region, and that will be okay because it's really being added not to the south region, but to the south panel, which the panel itself, as you see here, is what's added. We're going to add a second label to that panel. Let's go ahead and run the application again. You can see our other label, which was labeled as South 2, joins the flow layout of this South panel down here that we have in our South region. So border layouts are useful layout managers. They come in handy for many different purposes. Frequently you'll want a title at the top of your application and the north region is a good place for that. You may want some command buttons along the bottom and as we've shown here when you have a panel in that region you can add multiple buttons and have them appear down here. And then the center area you can have a panel where you have a lot of your main action and you have two sidebars here for other auxiliary panels. So this concludes our Border Layout Manager tutorial.